Hello, um, my name's um, Karen Heald and I'd just like to do a brief introduction about um, this collaborative presentation. Um, it's an arts and science presentation um, from um, myself and um, Sue Liggett and Dr Richard Tranter and Professor Rob Poole. Um, I'll just say a little bit about us all. Um, I am a, a practice-based art artist and researcher. I work in the media of video performance and installation um, and photography uh, and I'm exploring issues of sleep, time and dreams. Um, this presentation stems from my um, research as artist in residence in um, the Ablett Unit, a UK hospital. I've been working collaboratively with uh, Susan Liggett for um, a couple of years. Sue is a practicing painter whose work is idiosyncratic and highly intuitive. We've been, both been working on a research project since January 2010 with Dr uh, Richard Tranter and Professor Rob Poole. Richard is a consultant psychiatrist and senior clinical lecturer of medical sciences at Bangor University and the research department at the Cadwallader, um, Betsy Cadwallader University Health Board in North Wales. Um, Rob has worked as a, a clinical um, psychiatrist for 28 years and he's now Professor of Mental Health at Glyndor University. I'll discuss our um, proposed research um, project um, shortly but I'd just like to um, go through a few um, ideas that um, we're actually working through within our research. Sue and I have been looking at um, uh, Julia Kristeva's concept of uh, that female subjectivity seems linked to both cyclical time and monumental time and also um, psychological resonance which is um, Sue's concept of a particular part of the creative process that conjures up the idea of movement. I've actually been ex exploring uh, Chris Davis' notion of the semiotic aura um, in such um, a way as um, a pre-verbal space um, relating to rhythms, colours um, and trace. Um, I'm interested in the aspect of the unconscious um, through working with the patients at the hospital um, and um, I'm actually going through the process of making some um, films, quite dreamlike films, um, looking at um, sort of the state of um, an in-betweenness between sort of awake and sleep. Um, Sue has found in her um, area of in-betweenness relates to the um, stage in the um, creative process where the artist in her research um, cannot actually articulate in their words and we're actually um, building on this um, research. The, the initial part of this presentation will talk about um, the residency at the um, Ablett unit and um, like I say we'll go on to talk about the um, proposed um, research with um, Richard and Rob. Um, shortly. Um, a significant influence um, for me has been the work of um, Chris Davis' uh, Revolution in Poetic Language and Women's Time, um, through which I'm exploring the notions of maternal, cyclical, monumental time poetics and the semiotic aura um, as defined in these earlier writings. One of Chris Davis' most important uh, propositions is her idea of the semiotic, or pre oedipal stage. For Chris Davis, the semiotic is closely related to the infantile pre state in both Lacan and Freud. And through this sort of um, emotional force, um, which is tied to our instincts, and which exists in the fractures and intonations of language, rather than in a denotative meaning of the words. In this sense, the semiotic is opposed to the symbolic, or the post oedipal stage, which refers to a more denotative mathematical correspondence of words to meaning. And um, through Chris Davis' version of, the, of Plato's Chora, um, she takes this to mean the um, feminine Chora, which is roughly the unrepresented place of the mother. Like the feminine in general, the Chora is on the side of the material, poetic dimension of language. Um, she frequently associates the term chora and semiotic, reminding that the chora is a space in which meaning that is produced is semiotic. 
Um, so I'm really, really interested in this sort of like um, pre-verbal space, um, sort of the intonations of sound, um, you've got rhythms, whether that be through um, a sort of colour or film, um, you know, sort of going back to the, um, the sense of um, an infant who does not yet know how to use language um, to refer to objects, or um, in this particular instance within the hospital, or as a, a psychotic who has lost the ability to use language in a, properly, in a properly meaningful way. So I've become very interested in this notion and this abs aspect of the unconscious, subconscious through my work with the patients um, at the Ablett Hospital. The next three um, few slides, I'm actually going to um, show you some um, a very, very brief history of mine and Sue's interest um, of work um, relating to the Cora and the um, psychological resonance. And I'll introduce you to the, um, the artist residency at the Ablet. I'm very, very interested in, in the poetic and the visual language. And I'm, I'm, I'm evolving my own poetic, um, this poetic visual language that engages with the differences and similarities between painting and film. Um, through my films, I'm creating um, a language of painterly video that communicates difficult and personal issues with subtle, oblique visual stanzas. And um, through this, I have um, a, a lot of empathy with the um, patients in the unit. I actually perform both to both sides of the camera, so I work as um, a performer, you know, sort of doing performances myself, and I also work as sort of artist director. Um, there's a lot of relationship within my work to video, photography, and painting, sort of in, a, in art history sort of relevance. Um, initially um, conceptual, the work also explores art theory, yet it's also concerned with um, the, colors, um, the graphics of colour, line, and form. Um, the videos um, are either presented as films and performances or on or through objects and then they, they become to take on quite um, sculptural qualities um, to the artwork. My artwork has evolved out of working uh, both site specifically and on residences nationally, internationally. Um, diverse locations such as um, a former psychiatric hospital in Germany, a sleep research centre in Belgium and a Buddhist temple and capsule hotels in Japan. These have become sort of um, staged ephemeral events which um, I've evidenced by recording um, and documentation. And um, in this particular one it's a very much a response to sight um, via sound and visual. My practice-based uh, research adds to the discourse of women's time, sleep and location from an arts and science perspective. I respond to the unforeseen, placing myself and the camera in different places. Within the work, the interweaving of eclectic concepts is the basis of my practice. For Christiva, the speaking being becomes a crucial assemblage for comprehending oral, written literature, politics, national identity, sexuality, culture and nature. And I'd just like to um, quote Christiva here. She talks about the speaking being as a strange fold between them all, a place where inner drives are discharged into language, where sexuality interplays with thought, where the body and culture meet. The complexity of Chris Davis' theories, in particular the Cora, challenges the work because it's not strictly speaking representable. Constituting imagery and imagination, it is surreal and it's barely imagined. This is one reason why so much of um, Chris Davis work focuses on the borderline um, patients who frequent um, psychoanalysis couches. <laughs>